Do you ever wonder if all the content at GCSE level is right? In this new series we're going to take a look at some of the oversimplifications we get told at GCSE level. Chemical bonding. One day in class you forgot how to chemistry and so you put your hand up on them to ask a question. When your teacher finally stops ignoring you, you get the chance to ask, what is chemical bonding? You can expect an answer along the lines of, a chemical bond is something which holds compounds together. They may further develop this and say, there are two types of bonds, ionic bonding is when metals and non-metals bond, and covalent bonding for two non-metals. If you take this information without question, why would you? Your chemistry teacher just told you it's true. Let's have a deeper look into chemical bonds. Here we have them, the only two types of bonds to exist, ionic and covalent, as our chemistry teachers just said. Well, the silly chemistry teacher forgot one minor detail. These two types are either end of a spectrum of bonding. Covalent and ionic bonding are the extremes of the spectrum, and in between there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of different bonded types. Alright, maybe it was a big detail. If you look at this simply though, we can say that bond up here is slightly ionic, down here they are slightly covalent, and in the middle, well, they're in the middle. It doesn't matter what the spectrum means, but it does matter that there are far more chemical bond types than Mr Chemistry has just told us. As we already know, bonding is to do with electrons. That much is true. In ionic bonding, electrons are transferred from one atom to another, in covalent they are shared between them, and in the middle of the spectrum, again, they are in the middle. So the bond formed is dependent on where the electrons want to float. Is it on one atom only, on each atom equally, or one atom more than the other? Knowing this, we can try and see why this mentality does not work for saying ionic bonding is for metal to non-metals, and covalent is for non-metals to non-metals. As we know, the bond form is dependent on where the electrons spend their time. Where the electrons spend their time is dependent on the electronegativity of the elements. Electronegativity is very complicated, and so for now we will just say it's a measure how much the electrons love an element. We will put a box around it and leave it until our A-levels. That's too much complication for one video. This means compounds can be placed anywhere on this spectrum depending on the electronegativity of the elements involved in the compound. Chlorine, for example, has a strong electronegativity, so electrons love to be with chlorine, while sodium does not. Who even likes sodium? This means that electrons want to spend all their time with chlorine rather than the sodium. We do this with other compounds and finally they are placed all along the spectrum, not just at each end. This content is not part of your GCSEs, so don't learn it for them. It's been simplified to build up your knowledge slowly, but when we next think of chemical bonds we know that there are a lot more than just two. But don't go laughing at your teachers saying they're wrong, they're doing you a favour. Imagine writing a six mark essay on electronegativity and how chemical bonds can be slightly covalent. Trust me, it wouldn't be good.